Hi. So I'm going to just keep talking about a uh, little bit about defense mechanisms, but I was talking about being really angry before. And I know a lot of people look at me now and they're just like, I can't imagine you being this really angry. I don't want to say mean person, but if I needed to cuss somebody out, I would, and I wouldn't, I would go full throttle and it felt so good. I didn't even feel bad afterwards. <laughs> like, and I went hard, but I was doing things like that a lot because I always felt dead inside. And I know that I've mentioned that before, but the anger is something, and I'm thinking some of you might be able to relate. It's just something that would always make me feel so alive. But that doesn't mean that I was this horribly mean person all the time. I mean, I've always been goofy. I've always had a good sense of humor. Like, I'm a nice person, but if you piss me off or if I saw an opportunity, I would go for it because it was a lot easier for me to be pissed off and angry than it was for me to feel vulnerable and weak. Because remember, again, anger is a secondary emotion. And especially me, like when I start to feel powerless, I have to get aggressive. Like it starts freaking me out. I don't have to do that now. But I know that when I do start to feel really irrationally upset, angry, or irritated at people, probably the sexual abuse stuff is starting to kick in for me. And I will definitely do a separate video specifically about that. But right now I wanted to mention that for me, a lot of the anger was so that I could feel alive, a rush of something. Because like I said, I always felt so empty, so dead inside, so dull, bland. Like I just felt ugh, like I would just wake up and it's like, all right, what can I do today to, you know, try to feel something, to try to feel some sense of belonging, to feel some sense of anything, a connect, a connection. And so uh, I would work all the time. That was something I was guilty of doing because that's what I see a lot of people doing now is like, you know, we work, we stay busy, we take on projects, we just start doing things that we don't really even have to do if you think about it, but we need to do something so that we don't feel just uh, like dull. And so I would work a lot. I would like always be on the go. It wasn't uncommon for me to have like two, at least two jobs, be working 12, 13 hours a day taking on the overtime and, you know, going to school, having two jobs or whatever it was. It was like I always had to stay busy because I was scared when I wasn't, you know, if I'm not being super busy, then that means I'm kind of stuck with my thoughts and I'm stuck with this feeling of emptiness. I'm like that this doesn't feel good to me. It doesn't feel comfortable. So what can I do today, you know, to be impulsive? Like what can I do to go get a thrill to feel some sense of something? And so that's kind of where that started kicking in. But the, I would also go shopping. I've talked about this before, but that's another one of my addictions. Like I literally still have so many clothes and I've gotten rid of so much and I still have enough for like three lifetimes. Because when I went shopping, it was like 100, 200, 300 bucks at a time standard multiple times a week. But it wasn't even just that I went out and bought clothes. It was, you know, where am I going to wear this to? What is this going to look like? And well, now I need that belt to match and I don't even wear belts. Well, now I need shoes that are going to match. Well, now I need a jacket that's going to go with everything. <laughs> and so it was like I would think about it and obsess about it and then I would go home and then I would think about the one shirt that I kind of liked that I wasn't sure about and I'm like why didn't I buy it and then all night I'd be thinking about this one shirt that I didn't buy so then I'd go back the next day and buy it and so it was it was never like a problem like I you know wasn't able to pay my bills kind of a thing but it was pretty like intense like I mean I People, I never thought shopping was a could be a compulsion, but now now that I see how I was doing it, it's like yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. Because <laughs> OCD, I can relate to that very much, and so it's hard. Like it's hard to get over things like that because I didn't realize that I was doing that to avoid my emotions, to avoid feeling dead inside. Because what is how does that feel? It's like well, it feels. 
almost out of control. Like I don't have control of my life because this darkness is lurking over me every day and I don't know why and I don't like it and I can't get rid of it no matter how much I work or whatever, how many clothes that I buy or how many, you know, people that I get upset with. It's like, I cannot get through this dark cloud. Like it's just follows me everywhere I go. And so a big part of this process for me has been learning how to, you know, not feel angry, to not get angry and yell at people and take things out on other people because I'm starting to feel disconnected. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's very hard to avoid, go from avoiding our emotions all the time to starting to feel them and then actually feel calmer in the moment. It's, it gives me anxiety. You know, it's like instead of going and being upset, if I just go and sit and I try to meditate or be calm, it took me a long time before I was able to do that because it does not come naturally to me. It feels like at first it just kept feeling very like boring I guess is the word I want to use I'm like I'm antsy I can't do this I don't like this it's like well what are you feeling I I don't know like I'm feeling uncomfortable right now <laughs> it's like okay well what does that look like it's like well I'm I feel dead I don't feel alive like I'm not able to go and do things to make myself feel alive anymore so how am I supposed to feel something it's like because there's an emotion in there that you actually can be feeling that you have chosen not to feel your whole life and I was like oh really what's that well you can be vulnerable and you can feel that hurt that pain, you can start to feel that unworthiness, you can feel that um, low self-worth, you can feel the whole, I don't matter, I'm not good enough. You can feel unlovable and you can cry about it because it's okay that you feel that way and it's okay to cry because now you realize that that's actually why you were doing all those things in the first place. And I'm like, well, I don't want to realize that because now I feel stupid <laughs> because it's my whole life. My mask was to run away from everything, to run away from myself. So I never had a strong sense of self either. That's something I had to redevelop as an adult. And I struggled with that because, like, who am I when I'm not chasing a thrill? You know, who am I when I'm not shopping? Who am I when I'm not getting upset or trying to really feel powerful in the moment or show people, you know, I'm aggressive, don't mess with me because that makes me feel powerful because feeling powerless to me makes me feel, like I said, like anybody can take advantage of me and that scares the hell out of me. And so I don't like that. <laughs> and so it's like, well, what can you do in a healthier way? I was like, I guess I can address the fear why I feel powerless, which again, I'll get into the next video more specifically. But we all do something. We chase, we get a thrill, we want to feel alive, and that's normal. Especially when you felt dead your whole life, that's totally normal. And in the last video, I kept saying like I would try to control people, but I meant to say, I mean, you shouldn't control people, but I meant to say you can't change people because that's something else I kept doing. I was like, well, I'm gonna keep trying to change everybody else and fix everybody else and psychoanalyze everybody else because then I don't have to do that for myself. So really I'm helping everybody, right? Like now I'm avoiding my emotions still. So see, we do little things, we don't even realize it. And not that, you know, it's okay if I have wisdom and guidance that I can give people, but that's not what I would do. I would full-blown, like, why don't you see this? And you need to look at this. And, well, how come you're doing this? I mean, it was just like, I could see why some people are like, yeah, okay, I don't really want to hang out with you today because I don't really want you to point out all my shit. <laughs> and it's like, it's true because I, it's not really my business to do that unless somebody's talking to me about it and they just 
or wanting me to hear them out, you know, but it's, it's not our job to fix people. If they're asking for advice, you know, it's, it's a little bit different, but the, again, that's not how I was going about it. It was like, let me keep focusing on you and your shit so that I don't have to look at my shit and I'm totally guilty of doing that so much. And so all of these things that I had to keep learning, but a big part of giving a lot of these things up is that we start to feel afraid because we're giving up ways in which we've actually controlled our emotions, our whole lives, like our whole lives. We've learned to build the wall. We have learned to put up the multiple layers. We've learned to wear the mask. So it's like when in there were we really who we truly are, which is this lovable being that just wants to feel free to connect and love. When did you ever have a chance to do that? I was like, I didn't. And so it's like we grow up not really knowing who we really are. It's like we grow up being this person that's actually been afraid our whole lives. And we grow up with all these layers of self-protection, this mask of how am I going to be today to feel lovable? What am I going to do today to feel alive to feel some sense of worthiness in this lifetime like what am I going to do today (laughs) and that's all normal I'm just here to tell you that it's okay if you feel that way that's how I felt my whole life and that's not who we really are though we are lovable beings that deserve love in our lives but we have to give that to ourselves First and foremost, otherwise, all we're trying to do is get it from other things and other people, which is still technically like the thrill seeking. You know, it's the whole what can I do? You know, if I wake up and my attitude is what can I do today to feel good? Like from the outside, something on the outside has to happen to make me happy, to make me smile, to make me enjoy the moment instead of it being me. You know, what? today I actually love myself. And I'm going to go do something I enjoy for me, not because I'm seeking a thrill. So that's kind of the difference. When it comes from the inside, you're going to want to do some of the, you know, the similar things, but it's just you're going to feel more connected when you do it. And so that's why I'm encouraging you to love who you are, but you have to take off the mask. You have to get rid of the defense mechanisms. You have to get rid of the unhealthy coping mechanisms, the compulsions. What's your compulsion? Like mine was shopping in particular, but everybody has something different that they do to basically, like I said, you know, we do it to cover our emotions. And I did it for so many years. I had no idea that that's what I was doing. And it seems so obvious now, so many of the things that I was doing, but at that time it wasn't. And so right now, you know, the thing that's helped me is when I'm not able to get angry because it's not okay to take out my anger on other people because I'm not angry. I'm feeling hurt. I'm feeling powerless. I'm feeling weak. I'm feeling vulnerable. And those are all still kind of new for me. Not so much right now, but even now when I process through that, it's going to hurt. And like I said, I still resist it a little bit because by nature, this whole process is not very comfortable, but that's normal. And so if you feel dead and disconnected the way I have, and you feel empty and you're afraid that when you start giving these things up, you're going to feel more empty and more dead inside, you will at first a little bit and it'll feel so uncomfortable because it's like, and like I said, instead of waking up and chasing that thrill, what if you just woke up and got to know yourself a little bit that day? Who am I? What are some of the memories, you know, that caused me to kind of want to start doing these things? Like, who are you at your core? And when you start healing those wounds you start filling in that gap of disconnect and you start connecting to yourself, your true self, the you that is lovable no matter what. But we don't believe that because we spent our whole life trying to convince other people that we're lovable. 
what can I do? Can I get good grades? I clean my room. I was extra good. I ate my vegetables. I don't cause problems. I do really well in school all the time. You know, what can I do to make sure that everybody sees me as lovable and awesome and amazing? And when you grow up doing that constantly, because nobody's really paying attention to you, or maybe somebody's abusing you, and so that's the only attention that you're really getting, and that's negative. And so when in there did you ever feel worthy? And so we grow up in that, and so we become adults who don't really know how to be somebody lovable because we don't know what that looks like. What that looked like growing up was somebody who was always performing. So what do we do? We become adults who perform. Well, I'm going to work all the time. If I don't, then I feel like I'm not doing enough. So then actually you don't feel like you are enough. And if you were enough, it's because you're lovable. So if you're not enough, I'm guessing it's because you feel unlovable. (laughs) So you see the way that keeps working out, why I keep going back to that core wound? It's because that's where it comes from. So who are you? You are a lovable being. We all are. But you have to take off the mask and it's scary. It's going to (laughs) hurt and it's going to feel really, really weird and really, really uncomfortable. And that is so normal. It's like, because now that I can't go shopping, I have to sit here when I'm feeling anxious. I go for a walk or I'll start doing stretches or some kind of an exercise, maybe something physical. And I suggest that because it it really helps your body like physically kind of get out that anxiety, even if it's cleaning. I know nobody likes cleaning, but turn on some music, dance around a little bit. That's what I do. And just start pick an area and clean it. And then when you're done, you actually feel a sense of accomplishment also, which is a good thing. So when you start to feel antsy, that's normal. But don't do whatever it is that you normally do, the unhealthy behavior patterns. So it's like redirect, write a list, think of things that you can do instead of some of the things that you do now. And I will continue to share different things with you. But like I said, I'll get into the, um, because I've been getting triggered a lot with the sexual abuse stuff. So I'll tell you how I've been getting through that.